have recently released a high intensity action game for VR called The Relentless. And I wanted to just show you some of the techniques I've used to try and make you feel more comfortable and safe while you're playing the game. Now one of the main techniques I've used is to try and create some visual cues within the environment. So we're stood on a really high platform then over the edge there's a large drop of some water and this platform automatically scales to match the size of your boundaries you've set up. So straight away that gives you a, a strong visual cue when you're reaching the end and you'll naturally just stop before you get to that end and step over. And you can also see I've positioned these screens <clears throat> so that they align with the edges of your boundary as well. Just so if you're not looking directly at the floor, they'll catch the, the bottom of your eye line. And I've also got these projections coming up vertically. Now, I've not made those too strong because I don't want to feel as though you, you stood in a cage. And another thing that I've used as a, a visual cue is this little prop, which is basically just a lampshade that you can grab and position that over your physical light. So now when I'm punching, I'll be aware of that and know to avoid that area. Now, punching is something that's particularly dangerous with the default chaperone systems because if you're stood near a wall and you punch quickly, by the time those chaperones kick in, you've already really committed yourselves to that movement and you could easily hit the walls. So what I've done in this case is I get objects that approach those boundaries. They will actually light these projections just around the object. I push that through there. So you can see they don't have to be touching it, they're just approaching it. So if I turn these uh, these mines on, you'll see how that works. So as they come through, it lights up, and then I can see when it's safe to actually make contact with it. So I'm getting the warning the walls there, now knowing this is enough room, there's enough room to punch. Now that works for the mines okay, and they move nice and slowly so you've got a lot of time to make that decision. I've also got missiles in the game and these move more quickly. But I use the same idea but just put the representation onto the boundary system at an earlier stage. You see a couple of those. So you can see how it fades in and then fades out. See that again. So that should give you enough warning to not punch through and make contact with the wall. Now, the other thing you can do is take the player's position into account within this area. So if I know that I'm stood against the wall here, and if, if a missile is coming towards me, there'd be a good chance I'd punch towards it. And what I do is, you'll see I've sent the missile round the other side where I know there's more room. If I stand over towards this this wall, it's gone round the other side that time. And the other thing it'll do is, well, if I'm stood in a corner and it can't easily get the missile to you, it'll actually take it and go close. actually take it higher up so then you've got more room to actually make that maneuver in that. Some of the things that I've tried to do as well is to make sure that interactive objects are always inside your safe space. So for example if I just discharge my lasers there's there's little these little spheres that you use to charge your lasers up. So if I knock that out of the play area with the wrong controller you can see that immediately comes back in again and make sure it's in a space where I'm safe to touch it. Similarly menus, always just making sure they're in the actual physical area you can easily reach. So now I'm safe to swipe for those whenever I can see them. Now the other thing I, I do within this game is I have lasers that are fired towards you, these laser grids. And they always consider the position you stood in when you start and where it can safely move you to. So I've got some debug lines I can use to show you that. So if you just watch the floor. 
So you can see it calculated a, a line and it puts a little blue dot there where it knows that I'm safe to stand. So quite simple what it's doing but eventually <coughs> the player will get used to the fact that this laser grid is always keeping them in, in the safe space and as they start to trust that then they'll, they'll feel comfortable moving around quickly to get there. I also want to make the play move, even if you're in a four metre area, I'll only make them move just over a metre. So I'm not going to get them running really fast to reach that next point. It'll always be in a reasonable, a reasonable distance to keep them safe. The other thing I do as well is I have a strong sense of what the forward direction is. So when you configure your chaperone, you'll actually set a forward direction. And I make sure this is represented in the game really well. So we've got the menus forward the big statue is and all the rooms kind of geared that way and that's important because you know your physical space that you're in and it might be you've got a monitor that's straight forward of your play area it might be a doorway to your left so just by letting the player keep their ba their bearings with inside the play area they can keep themselves safe from other things they know about that the chaperone system doesn't <laughs> 